live from KSAT 12. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, January 10th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we got another cold day yesterday and starting off at 34 degrees again. Allergies are still a problem. Mix in some smoke from those prescribed burns at Camp Bullis yesterday. It was kind of a mess yesterday afternoon, Mike. Yeah, and uh, a beautiful day, though. I mean, it's yeah. made very nice throughout the day and then got cold this morning. And actually, that thermometer on your screen right now, that's one here in downtown. But out there officially at the airport, we have been below freezing for the past couple of hours at 31 degrees and not much of a gorgeous morning. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise it's gonna be gorgeous all day long and we are going to see a huge warm up anywhere from 35 to 40 degrees. So we'll go from low 30s, even 20s in the hill country, getting into the mid to upper 60s later on today. So big coat this morning. You won't need to buy the afternoon. The aquifer yesterday's reading dropped down three tenths of a foot and the allergens mountain cedar very, very high. And again, we've got a couple more fronts in the offing really going to give those mountain cedar trees good shake up over the next uh, five, six, seven days. As far as temperatures around the area right now, we've got, like I said, a lot of readings that are below freezing. Most of the areas below freezing right now. And then a lot of 20s comforts coming in at 23 degrees right now. A lot of 28s out there in the hill country, 31 out there at the airport. And again, bone dry air. So we've got clear skies. We've got bone dry air. We've got little or no wind out there. There may be a hint of a wind chill in a couple of spots, but all the ingredients for this radiational cooling, which is why we are going to be dropping down even another couple of degrees this morning. Then, like I said, sunny, beautiful throughout the rest of the day. Now, tomorrow, it's going to be much warmer, not as cold in the morning, warm, and then a big front's going to move through on Friday. So it's going to be much colder. As a matter of fact, temperature is going to stay steady or actually drop down a little bit on Friday. It's also going to be windy. Then we get into the weekend. Cold start on Saturday. Then we end up on the warm side. We're going to be right around 70. Then a big cold front, strongest front of the season, is going to be moving through here overnight into Monday. We are looking at a very hard freeze. Temperatures down in the 20s on Monday as well as on Tuesday to start off. And the problem on Monday is going to be the wind. There is going to be wind chill temperatures we're looking at right now. Low teens and even single digits early on Monday morning. So keep that in mind if you are planning on going to the MLK March on Monday. Of course, we are watching the entire situation as far as what Monday is with these very cold temperatures. So we'll get that all sorted out and uh, see if we're even going to get Get above freezing on Monday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez. Good morning, sir. Bet you got to warm up the car this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely had to myself. So maybe people run a little bit late. Make sure to give yourself a little extra time to do that if you have to this morning if you're headed out right now. So we had a very busy overnight, especially for our drivers and emergency crews out in the northwest side. You're looking behind me here at our Trans Guide camera, I 10 West at Loop 1604. So all things quiet right now, but earlier this morning, we had a reported fatal crash out there on the far northwest side. So this crash happened on the westbound lanes of Loop 1604 right after that I-10 intersection. So basically, if you live around this area, you know, it's the Olive Garden, the Texas, uh, the Longhorn Steakhouse out there. So it's kind of that Six Flags area. So again, things quiet out there. But earlier we had reports of a deadly crash and we had some video that we want to show you from the scene and kind of give you an idea of what happened. We had uh, reports that a driver um, reportedly went around an off-duty officer who was blocking traffic for construction that driver ultimately crashed into uh, one of the construction vehicles out there reportedly a crane and unfortunately that driver was pronounced dead by uh, EMS officials on the scene so this case obviously under investigation but back out here in maps right now you see that we have smooth sailing out there right now um, on the westbound part of 1604 at I-10. So that's good news there for our drivers. And uh, we'll continue, obviously, give you the very latest on what exactly happened with that crash. The rest of the city, things looking pretty good for the most part. We are clearing out a crash a little bit south of downtown. That was at uh, 35 at Burbank. That has been uh, cleared out, even though our maps are indicating we still have a little bit of some uh, activity in that area there. But for the most part, things looking pretty good for the rest of the city of San Antonio. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for two men who shot and killed an 18 year old man in his vehicle last night. Happened just after 9 p.m. in the parking lot of an apartment complex in the 5600 block of Culebra on the west side. Police say the man and his girlfriend had just returned from shopping and were dropping off items at the apartments when the shooting started. SAPD says the girlfriend was hurt and the 18 year old was shot and killed. 
The suspects got away. So far, police have not released a detailed description of those suspects. And we are keeping an eye on a water main break that's causing low water pressure or no water. In a tweet, San Antonio Water System says it's happening in South Bear County, south of Loop 1604, east on both sides of I-37 South. So it says crews are working to restore service there. And it's flu and cold season and medical health professionals are busy taking care of those making trips to the urgent care and emergency room. Now data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention tells us in Bear County the number of RSV cases is going down, but COVID-19 and flu numbers are going up. Local doctors say most of the families can treat their symptoms at home with over-the-counter medications and lots of fluids. But it is important to know when it's time to see a doctor. If they've had a fever that's lasted more than a day or two, if they have um, cough, congestion, runny nose that doesn't seem like it's getting better and it's already been close to two weeks, um, things like that can sometimes indicate that there may be something more serious going on. You're saying wash your hands. I think a lot of this can be avoided for a better hygiene. Cold and flu season peaks in January and February. Medical professionals remind those taking care of the sick to take time to care for themselves as well. Now to the race for the White House. In just five days, it's the Iowa caucus, the first contest of the 2024 presidential election cycle. Former President Donald Trump, though, is attending arguments in federal court on his election subversion case as several of his GOP rivals campaign in Iowa. As ABC's M1 reports, a new poll is showing that Nikki Haley making some movement. This morning, with the Iowa caucus just days away and President Biden back at the White House after several campaign events, former President Trump was in a courtroom looking on as his legal team sought to convince a skeptical panel of judges that he should be immune from prosecution for his actions taken during office. Could a president order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? That's an official act in order to SEAL Team 6. He, he would have to be and would speedily be you know, uh, uh, impeached and convicted before the criminal but prosecution. Trump's lawyers argued his federal election subversion indictment should be dismissed. But the prosecution fired back, warning immunity would be scary if there were no criminal charges against someone trying to usurp election results. The former president standing by his assertion after the proceedings. The president has to have immunity. On the campaign trail, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie knocked Trump on his time spent in court. Today, which is the place he spends more time in than actually Iowa or New Hampshire. Trump's other GOP rivals in Iowa, where snow is blanketing parts of the state. Businessman Vivek Ramaswamy joining a campaign stop via iPad. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley thanking supporters for showing up in the weather while making her closing arguments to voters. The only way we're going to win the majority of Americans is if we go forward with a new generational leader that leaves the negativity and the baggage in the past. And Governor Ron DeSantis splitting from Trump after the former president predicted the economy would crash, suggesting he wanted it to happen this year. If the economy crashes, people would get thrown out of work, businesses would go under. I don't want to see that happening. New Hampshire's first in the nation primary is in just two weeks. A new CNN poll shows Haley cutting into Trump's lead there, now just seven points behind the former president, with 32 percent of the vote. DeSantis plummeting to five percent. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Over 100 million Americans under flood watches or advisories this morning. That's as powerful winter storms tore through the southeast, drenching the east coast and blanking the central and northwestern United States with snow. Falling trees killed two people near Atlanta, including a 78-year-old man crushed while he was driving. In Claremont, North Carolina, one person was killed too badly injured as winds tore through a mobile home park. A tornado was confirmed near Bamberg, South Carolina, and further south, tornadoes also pummeled Florida's panhandle. Overnight, gusting winds and flooding rains pounded the northeast, causing flooding in several major metro areas, including New York City. Masked men broke onto the set of a public television channel in Ecuador, waving guns and explosives during a live broadcast yesterday. The men, armed with pistols and what looked like sticks of dynamite, entered the set of the TC television network during a news program that was airing live in thousands of homes across the nation and shouted that they had bombs. No one was killed in that attack, and authorities later said that all 13 masked intruders had been arrested.
and would be charged with terrorism. Well, Steph, it's game day. Spurs are in Michigan getting ready to play the Detroit Pistons tonight. In the Spurs 117-115 loss Sunday in Cleveland, Victor Winbenyama had 24 points and 10 rebounds for his 15th double-double in 31 games played this season. Wimby is still on a minutes restriction to safeguard his right ankle. We'll see how the Spurs do when they try to snap their five-game losing streak tonight. Detroit lost to the Sacramento Kings last night. Final score 131 to 110. We'll see how this goes. Go Spurs go. Yes, go Spurs go. Time now 510 and 33 degrees for now. Just to add on GMSA how Meta is helping to restrict teens from viewing some kinds of content on Facebook and Instagram. Walmart showing off its latest AI features. Up next, how the changes could help with your shopping experience. And outside with live cam this morning, plenty cold uh, in my neighborhood. It was uh, right at freezing this morning, 33 at the airport. But we've all got to start planning ahead for extremely cold temperatures next week. Mike has more in your extended forecast. And welcome back. It's 514. Walmart has launched new artificial intelligence shopping features that it says will transform the way we shop. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive on the future of shopping. It's like a magical experience. Walmart using artificial intelligence to transform the way we shop. At the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, the world's biggest retailer launching new features. And this morning, we're going one-on-one -on -one with the CEOs of Walmart and Microsoft. This idea that you could choose something and immediately share it virtually with someone to say, do you like this or not? What's behind that? Really, shopping should be fun. If you can also share that with someone else digitally to say, do you like this sweater or not? It's just going to make shopping even more enjoyable. The most powerful thing about any technology is its ability to tr empower us. And that's not the only big change they have planned. We'll have much more of our ABC News exclusive interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Las Vegas. Quarter past the hour, now 31 degrees, according to Mike Osterhage. Right, chilly out there. Let's look outside with Trans Sky looking over at RJ's favorite shot. That was I-37 at the Alamo Dome. Now looking at I-10 at Callahan West. Things are moving, but we're going to get a check in with him very soon. When you smell the amazing scent of Gain Flings, time stops. Your heart races. Your eyes close, and you realize you're in love. Steve! With a laundry detergent. Gain Flames, seriously good scent. And 50% more fresh. Now that's love at first sniff. There's something going around the Gordon hole. Good thing Gertrude found Delsum. Now what's going around is 12-hour cough relief. And the giggles. The family that takes Delsum together feels better together. Wow, that's good. Almond Breeze? You like the Almond Breeze I got you. That's so interesting. What's happening, Dad? With delicious taste and 50% more calcium. <laughs> Blue Diamond Almond Breeze. Don't just milk it, almond milk it. Welcome back, 518. It's cold out there this morning. We'll talk to Mike in just a sec. Yeah, guys, I was hearing, uh, you know, my dad's voice when I walked out of the house. Make sure you warm up your car. <laughs> Fortunately, I uh, didn't have uh, too much time, though. I was running a little bit behind, but make sure that you do that. But definitely, yeah, my dad always like, make sure you warm up your car. I remember he used to even put, like, towels over the windshield to yeah. make sure it wouldn't freeze on the, yeah, a lot of weird old hacks. Hey, trust me, uh, my son's 24, and I saw him the other day. Is that coat warm enough? <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, that was very dad-like. Yeah. You do that, too? Yeah, yeah of course you do. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> All right, guys, we're taking a look at TransGuy. That shot you just saw there, 10 West 1604, we see that uh, traffic is moving through that area, but we did have that deadly crash uh, from overnight. But uh, things have cleared out there on the far northwest side. We take a look at 35 Loop 410. Traffic moving pretty smooth in uh, both directions right there. I want to take you outside to our maps because even though this crash is not being reported on a highway, again, just a lot of activity there on the far northwest side. Uh, UTSA Boulevard, obviously a major thoroughfare that a lot of people use around the 
this area, especially around, obviously, UTSA. Uh, so we have a crash that was reported there by the San Antonio Fire Department. Um, not sure to right now how many, what sort of details we're getting on this, but I'll continue to follow this. Just kind of keep an eye on it. Again, we have cleared out this uh, major crash there that had shut down 1604 westbound there a little bit uh, further north from that uh, UTSA Boulevard. All right, let's go to the far east side now. Something that we've been following over the past couple of days is this ongoing construction taking place there. I-10 westbound at FM 1518. So right now, um, TxDOT is reporting that we still have a couple of lanes there closed from this lingering overnight construction. Hopefully they could get that cleared out, but you can see traffic is still getting through there. The shoulder is still open in that area. Rest of the city, things looking pretty good. For the most part, we cleared out that earlier crash that was at 35 at Burbank, so that's good news there for our drivers around the downtown area. All right, Mike, it's been cold. How are things looking outside right now? By the way, did you wear a heavy coat this morning, young man? Uh, I wore <laughs> a jacket. I don't, wouldn't consider it heavy. Okay, but do you have a son? Okay. <laughs> yes. Justin's going to come in this morning griping about how cold it is. It's like, where's your coat? Well, I didn't wear one. So uh, we got a lot of clear skies around here, and temperatures are going to be, uh, we'll, we'll bottom out right at 30 and then start a little bit of a warming process uh, throughout the course of the morning. And then once that sun comes up, we're really going to be warming up. We're going to see temperatures go up. Five, six, seven, eight degrees every hour. We'll make it up to 60 at noon and then top off at 68. So again, we're going to be gaining anywhere from 35 to 40 degrees. Good indication of the very, very dry air that is in place. Now, humidity stays low today. It starts to work its way back in here tomorrow, so it's not going to be as cold in the morning and then it really comes back in here by the afternoon tomorrow drops way down on Friday. This is the next front that moves on through here. Dry air for Saturday starts to work its way back Sunday and then really drops down. And yes, that's saying negative one for a dew point temperature. That means beyond bone dry air. It's where you really, really feel how dry the air is. And that's going to be the situation on Monday as well as on Tuesday with those the humidity is just plummeting and that then is going to help out and allow temperatures to really get cold. Here's what's looking what it's looking like around the country Four at Cut Bank, 16 Bismarck, 17 at Omaha. So the colder air is working its way on in here and this is just the leading edge of this mass of really cold air. It's down to 42 degrees below zero up there in Canada. So this is going to continue to push its way down to the south. And we've got the first front that's moving through here on Friday. Then we have another front that moves through here Sunday night into Monday. So here's what it looks like with the upper level steering winds. This is basically the dividing line between the warmer air and the colder air. We've got the colder air in place right now. And as we go into tonight and tomorrow, a little bit of a kind of more of a westerly flow in the atmosphere. We got westerly winds today south to southwest and uh, that's going to pull in some milder temperatures. That's going to help to keep us like I said, a warmer tomorrow morning. We get up into the mid 70s tomorrow. Then we get this next front that moves on through here. This nice big chunk of cold air that comes in for Friday. Temperatures will either stay steady or drop down throughout the day on Friday. Cold Saturday, we get back into a little bit of a kind of a westerly flow on Sunday. Then these upper level wind lines are almost coming straight down out of Canada by Monday. And that's when we get our coldest air around here. We are looking at low temperatures down in the mid 20s Monday, maybe even low 20s on Tuesday. We'll see how actually this chunk, how big of a chunk it is that comes down in here. And we're going to have windy conditions on Monday as well. So wind chill temperatures are definitely going to be brutally cold. We're looking at 10 low teens, uh, even single digits for wind chill temperatures on Monday. So plan ahead if you are planning on going out to the MLK March. So today, 68, 74. Tomorrow, 45 on Friday, windy. We start off right around freezing Saturday, but then get up to 70 on Sunday. Monday, we may be tough to get out of the above freezing on Monday, down in the mid-20s. We're going for mid-20s on Tuesday as well. Now, there is one computer model that wants to have just the smallest little bit of moisture mixed in Monday. Others, no. So we're tracking that. We're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, it is trending even drier, though, even from yesterday, but that's something we are we are definitely watching for early, early Monday morning. But the biggest story, I think, is going to be just the wind chills. They are going to be brutal on Monday. Oh, man, let's oh, hope oh. it stays dry. Yes, because yeah. that would be a 
bad combination. It would, and there's probably going to be a run on soup at HEB next week, oh, right? Sure. That's a good idea. And talking about heavy coats, yeah, very heavy coats. But yeah, the wind chills are really going to be the factor on Monday. So okay, we'll do our best to stay warm. Thank you, Mike. 524, 32 degrees. Up next, how Google Maps will soon make it easier for electric car owners to find charging stations. 527 Meta will start restricting some content from reaching teens on Facebook and Instagram. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, more protections for young social media users. Meta, parent company of Facebook and Instagram, has announced plans to hide content it deems inappropriate for teens. That includes posts about self-harm and eating disorders. Walmart is developing a new AI feature to help customers keep their cupboards and their refrigerators well stocked. It's part of their in-home delivery service and will use an algorithm to anticipate customers' needs and automatically order for them. Those items will then be delivered directly to your fridge in your pantry. Finally, Google's Android Auto feature will soon share real-time updates with Google Maps about your electric vehicle's battery. Then Maps will offer suggestions about charging stations along your route. It will roll out on certain Ford EVs in the coming months, and then it will expand from there. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon and Alley. Have a great day. 528, now 31 degrees. And up next, why more lawmakers in Washington are now supporting the possibility of a government shutdown. Plus, a popular gift that may have been on many people's Christmas list is being recalled. We'll tell you what's wrong with this massage gun. Good morning, everybody. Wednesday, January 10th. Right, we made it to the middle of the week, and it's it's been a cold one, but it's going to get even colder next week. Yes, we've got really a roller coaster coming up over the next uh, few days because we are going to be up into the mid 70s tomorrow, and then dropping back down, back up to 70 on Sunday, and then really dropping down. So yeah, we've got a couple of uh, strong cold fronts, strongest cold front of the season coming through here. We're going to be huddled together right here on the set next week, aren't we? <laughs> oh yeah, next, rubbing our hands together. <laughs> yeah, next Monday, of course, it is a, a holiday, and so school are going to be out, which is good news for that. But of course, a lot of folks, you know, are, are planning on the march on Monday. You definitely want to plan ahead as far as the, uh, the temperatures and to bundle up and then some. All right, we are starting off clear skies right now. Temperature is at 31. Dew point stands at 26. Clear skies, not much of a breeze. Dry air We will drop down another degree, a couple of degrees this morning. And most everybody is below freezing as of right now. Well down into the 20s, 23 is coming in at Comfort. Uh, freezing Castroville at Randolph, Stinson, and 28 as well. Bernie and Hondo, like I said, will drop down a couple of more degrees because of this dry air that is in place. There is a hint of a breeze in a couple of spots, um, maybe a, a slight bit of a wind chill, but again, you got the dry air, or excuse me, the, the calm air, no wind to speak of, and that allows that heavier air to cool to settle down here to the surface. Mountain Cedar, very, very high, and with those next couple of fronts coming on through here, going to give it another couple of good shakes to the Mountain Cedar trees. Mold is on the low side. Of course, the updated count is going to come out later on this morning. 60 at noon, 68 high temperature, so we go from 31 all the way up to 68. We're going to be on across the board 35 almost 40 degrees from the low to the high later on today not as cold tomorrow morning then like i said very warm those next couple of fronts we'll talk about what's in store for the weekend and just how cold it is going to get to start off next week brutally cold and got wind chills to deal with all that's coming up traffic authority rj still got that problem on the northwest side uh actually mike a couple of different things that we've been following on the northwest side right now real quick take you outside trans guide traffic cam is looking at 90 general big mulling we see traffic is moving pretty good in both directions they're a little bit heavier volume of traffic actually 281 at grayson traffic moving pretty good there as well. Uh, so uh, one of the things we've been following northwest side, this crash there in UTSA Boulevard there at Jimenez Avenue. So it's not on the highway, but again, a major road that people in that area use, especially to get in and around the university. Might be a little too early before people actually get to the university, but something we'll continue to follow throughout uh, the rest of our morning as long as we have a situation ongoing there. Uh, the other incident that we've been following throughout the, the overnight hours is we had a fatal crash earlier, 1604 westbound and I-10. That has been clear 
cleared out. So if you were not with us during our five o'clock uh, half hour, just know that uh, that has been cleared out there at uh, 1604 West and I-10. So that's good news there for our drivers on the northwest side. Everything else looking pretty good. A lot of green on our screen right here. Uh, TechStop reporting that that construction that was shutting down the westbound lanes of I-10 at FM 1518, that has been cleared out. So again, smooth sailing throughout most of the parts of San Antonio without, with the exception of that one crash there at UTSA Boulevard. We'll continue to follow the very latest and give you more updates when we get them. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. To our top story this morning, a fourth person now under arrest in connection to a kidnapping case on the city's south side. This case involves a family kidnapped from their home. 28-year-old Monica Robles is now charged with two counts of aggravated kidnapping. Officers tell us Robles came forward and told police about her role in the kidnapping. Her bond is set at $400,000. It all stems from an incident September 6th on Mission Bell Street near Loop 410 and Highway 16. San Antonio police say a couple was taken from their home just after 6 a.m. Five kids were left behind in the home. They were not hurt, and that couple was later found. This morning, some Republicans now say they're willing to shut down the government if Democrats don't meet their demands. They say border security and debt reduction are worth it. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, this afternoon, a GOP group is set to hold an event explaining their views. There's a likelihood we could have a week or two short-term you know, uh, uh, shutdown. A growing number of Republicans say they'd support using a government shutdown as a negotiating tactic. Right now, the U.S. is operating under a two-part funding plan that expires January 19th and February 2nd. Some conservatives say letting the clock run out could pressure Democrats into more spending cuts and tighter border security. Several are holding an event this afternoon to explain that position. They have support from a few GOP leaders. There are only some very rare exceptions in extenuating circumstances. The, the border is one of those. There's a real urgency to get these appropriation bills passed. But the group doesn't speak for the whole party. We absolutely cannot have a government shutdown. It's just a small minority. And unfortunately, we just have a small majority. Past polling suggests shutdowns are unpopular, and this is an election year. Speaker Mike Johnson says House and Senate leaders are working on a long-term bipartisan plan. Democrats are signaling they could support it, but working across the aisle is what cost former Speaker Kevin McCarthy the gavel. But people are saying that at home, and they do not want to see our Republican Speaker of the House getting rolled in these meetings behind closed doors. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. U.S. Navy has shot down two dozen missiles and drones over the Red Sea that were launched from Yemen. Officials say the missiles were launched by Houthi militants. Initial assessments show no damage to ships or injuries. The Houthi is an Islamist organization and claims its attacks are in solidarity with the Palestinian people. More than 20 countries have joined forces to protect critical waterways like the Red Sea. U.S. Navy has a number of ships there. The latest attack comes as the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is visiting Israel. In Connecticut, the trial for the woman accused in assisting in the murder of a mother of five who vanished in 2019 is set to begin tomorrow. Jennifer Doulis was in the midst of a divorce and custody battle with Fotis Doulis when she disappeared after dropping off her kids at school. Now, police believe that Fotis Doulis attacked Jennifer in her garage, then disposed of her body, which has not been found. He died by suicide in 2020 after he was charged with her murder. And at the trial, a judge has ruled that Jennifer Doulis be declared legally dead. 538, about 31 degrees. You or someone you know may have received one of these massage guns for Christmas this year. Up next, we're going to tell you why they're being recalled. Outside with live cam, bundle up. Mike says uh, just about everybody should be right around freezing this morning, including you. We'll uh, get a look at his Wednesday forecast straight ahead. And welcome back. It is 541. In your morning consumer headlines, some Ford Focus owners should consider making an appointment with their dealers. The automaker is recalling nearly 140,000 cars because of a safety concern. Now, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Ford Focuses from 2016 through 2018 have faulty oil pump dry belts. Officials say this problem can cause a loss of oil pressure, increasing the chances of an engine stall or a loss of power braking. 
The recall also applies to Ford EcoSports from 2018 through 2022. Owners of affected vehicles will be contacted and the problems will be repaired at no cost. A company called Hometics is recalling about 87,000 massage guns sold at major retailers. It's over their potential to overheat while charging, posing a risk of fires and burns. Recall follows 17 reports of the massagers overheating. One of them included a thumb burn. Massagers were sold in stores and online here in the U.S., also in Canada, between September 2020 and November of last year. Consumers should stop using or charging the recall products and contact Home Medics for a refund or a credit. The time now is 542, and Mike says it's about 31 degrees right now. Up next, Animal Defense League standing by to tell us how you can adopt this gorgeous cat. And let's look out there with Trans Guide. A little more vehicles on the roadway there you saw at Highway 90. And things are moving at Highway 281. We're going to be checking in with RJ very soon. Felicia is here for the new year with a little kid. I shouldn't say little kitty cat, big <laughs> kitty cat, who is up for adoption. Who's this? Yeah, this is Bronson, and he is a two-year-old who is already ready to go to his new forever home. He's super sweet, loves to cuddle, likes to talk a lot mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> yes, not a big fan of being here in the studio with all the lights and everything like that. And you have the most beautiful golden eye. Wow. I don't yeah, know what that color is, but yeah, he's very handsome. Yeah. What y'all got going on? Well, on behalf of Bronson and myself, we would love to just okay, recognize kitty. everyone um, from, you know, this past year who has supported ADL in any capacity, whether it's volunteering, Hi, donating, fostering, and then of course adopting. So we're super excited to share that we had over 5,600 adoptions. Wow. Which is amazing. And so many wonderful pets who had been with us for quite some time, found their forever homes, and we're just very, very thankful and excited to see what 2024 brings. So maybe 5,601. Yeah, right, there we here. go. So, uh, a lot of <laughs> volunteering, fostering opportunities, donation, wish list, everything else. So yes. he's not having a good time. So <laughs> if you'd like more on uh, Bronson and everything else out there at the Animal Defense League, Lemon the Grand and Actocious, or Go to adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Good Thank job, you. Bronson. Good job. Man, that is a large cat. Yes. Yeah. A good little workout for New Year. Don't, I yeah. assume it won't get any bigger, Mike. I, I assume not. I mean, <laughs> feet, probably not. So. We shall see. 547. Let's check back with RJ. Yeah. Um, good looking cat there, by the way. Uh, the other day, I actually spotted a fox in our neighborhood. I thought that was very interesting. I don't know if they come out during the more of the winter months, but I thought it was very interesting to spot a fox out there in the South Town area. All right, uh, we're taking a look at Trans Guide. Something just popped up on TxDOT's uh, website right now. We're looking at 35 FM 3009 for our drivers that are coming into town, uh, maybe from uh, the shirts, kind of those Selma Cibolo area. We had a stalled vehicle. Now we are seeing traffic move pretty smooth through this area. So, uh, and according to our maps, it looks like we are seeing traffic, uh, you know, kind of getting through here. So again, stalled vehicles, southbound lanes, Cibolo Valley Drive. So this is gonna be right before you get to 3009 and Roy Richard Drive, obviously Shirts Parkway. So just something to keep in mind if you are headed in from uh, some of these areas a little bit further on the northeast. We're still following this other crash on the far northwest side. Again, off the highway here, UTSA Boulevard at Jimenez Avenue. But again, something that uh, we're keeping in our, our eye on throughout uh, most of this morning. It's been out there for a little while, so it would appear to be something uh, a bit major out there on UTSA Boulevard. Rest of the city, things looking pretty good. Uh, this just spotted, uh, this just showed up on our camera right, or on our maps, excuse me, right now. This was on 410 at FM 78. So I'll continue to follow exactly what's going on out there. See if we get some uh, trans guide traffic shots out there on 410 and 78 and get a little bit more information but rest of the city traffic looking pretty good out there guys as people kind of warm their vehicles up maybe get the cot coffee going on their uh, Wednesday morning right before they head to work or school. RJ do you remember there was a fox spotted here at KSAT I a year or two ago and it was on the, it was on the oh, roof. That's right. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was found up on the, the roof one. and they were worried. They were like, well, what do we do? And you don't do anything. It found its way up. Right. It eventually found its way down. Yep, right. But they, yep. they, 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 a they, fox they family? Wasn't it a fox family? I just remember they were they were trying to name it. I don't remember what they settled on. Naming I can't the, remember what we settled on. Yeah, but just uh, the case at Fox. Yeah. There we go. Did they name it 29? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get fox it. Fox 29. Oh, yeah. gotcha. <laughs>
Anyway, okay. take a look outside. <laughs> I liked it. Uh, we've got a lot of clear skies out there. It is cold this morning. Definitely bundle up. And what we are watching, the Arctic air coming in here on Monday. Of course, we've got 30 below, 40 below temperatures up there in Canada. And that's going to continue to work its way down to the south. So here's what is going to be going on. Temps are just going to be plummeting on Monday. Sunday, we're going to be up around 70. And then that front moves through. And boy, these things. I mean, just temperature is going to be falling off a cliff and we're going to have some brutal wind chills. We're looking at winds uh, 25, 30 miles per hour gusting on top of that. So wind chills are definitely going to be in the single digits. Now there is a small wintry precipitation chance as we go into Sunday night, early Monday morning. I want to show you this in just a moment. Uh, another hard freeze on Tuesday. We're looking at temperatures down in the 20s. I'm going mid 20s right now and that may be on the kind of the conservative side as far as temperatures. So, of course, pets, plants, people, and your pipes. You're going to have to just keep those all in mind for Monday and Tuesday. So, two different computer models. We'll look at a, a couple of more, but I want to show you these two different ones. This is the one that has a little bit of moisture around here. Now, granted, as I always say with these long-range computer models, it's a, it's a broad brush. They just kind of sweep across here. This one is the one that wants to have a little bit of precipitation around here early on Monday morning. And to look at, to put it in actual numbers, it would be one one hundredth of an inch of precipitation. Of course, when you have freezing temperatures, that would be just enough. So that's one computer model and it clears things out. Of course, here's another computer model and a couple of more agree with this one where yes, there's moisture off to the east, but then nothing around here on Monday. So this is sort of the, the direction that we are leaning and even though the one that has the moisture in there has has dried out a little bit or not as much as even what it looked like yesterday. And again, this is still five days away, so a lot can change between now and then. But that's what we're looking at as of right now for today. Short term 30 degrees. We're going to be bottoming out, so we'll drop down another couple of degrees here and there. Nice big warm up throughout the day. This dry air doesn't hold the heat in, but then it cools off very, very quickly. Excuse me, then it warms up very quickly, I should say. And then we're going to make it up to 60 at noon and then top off at 68. So again, we warm up 35, 40 degrees throughout the course of the day today. Now going into the next few days tomorrow, it's not going to be as cold in the morning. We stay at 48 degrees, get up to 74. The first front moves through here on Friday and temperatures are basically going to be dropping down throughout the day. We will only be in the mid 40s on Friday. It is going to be windy on Friday as well. Cold start Saturday, only 58. Then look at that Sunday, 70. That front moves on through here. Like I said, temperatures are just plunging on Monday. Mid 20s, Monday, Tuesday morning, maybe even colder than that. Definitely colder in the hill country. Wind chills are really going to be the biggest problem as of right now on Monday. We're looking at low teens and even single digits for wind chills starting off on Monday. I have to remember the scarves, yeah. the hats, everything. Obviously, and we're going to keep yeah. watching, you know, what may change, what may transpire between now and then. But one thing for sure, cold, ridiculously cold. Ridiculously cold. Yeah. Coming from you, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cold. <laughs> 553, 32 degrees or so. Let's look outside. Oh, no, inside for your lottery numbers. Okay, pick three, three, eight, eight. Fireball 8, Daily 4, 9106, Fireball 6. I'm going to take my numbers outside, Steph. Cash 5, 5, <laughs> 10, cold. 19, 25, 33. And we also have Mega Millions, 12, 15, 32, 33, 53, Mega Ball 24, Mega Plier 3. Good morning, America. Coming up, the stories we're all following this morning. The extreme weather. One storm exits the country as another storm comes in from the west. And so many of us are waking up with the damage, the flooding that will go on for days. We'll have the latest as we track that storm out and the new storm taking shape. Also this morning, an ABC News exclusive look inside the future of shopping. How Walmart is using AI to change how we buy everything. From clothing to the stuff you need every day. That's coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, Spurs back in action tonight, hoping to pick up a much needed win against Detroit. Plus, if you're struggling with mountain cedar allergies, and most of us are, we've got the right meds so you can take for your symptoms before you head out the door this morning. And up next, a local family picking up the pieces after their food truck flipped over in an accident, how they're trying to get things back on track. And checking the roads with TransSky, 281 at 410. Traffic looks great right now. We're going to check back in with RJ coming up at the top of the hour. 
Let's look out there with live cam. We're starting actually at 33 degrees, very cold out there. Uh, but we're gonna look forward to some even colder temperatures next week. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Time to rise and shine at six o'clock on your Wednesday, January 10th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, do you remember where all your cold weather items are? I no. mean, like the real ones, like the heavier jacket, the scarf, the hat. Do you? <laughs> I, I know where they're at. You know where they're Okay, yeah. I'm missing a few things. All right, well, we have time to locate those because we have some really cold temperatures coming yeah. our way next, next week, and we join Mike Ostrich. Now, Mike, I would say to people that are new to San Antonio, some of the temperatures we might see next week are, are below normal. Oh, way below normal. Yeah. Normal low right now is 41 degrees. We are going to be anywhere from 15, almost 20 degrees below that by the start of next week. But this morning, I was going to use the example that somebody told me years ago, and I always love it. The temperatures right now are like chocolate milk. So think of a glass of chocolate okay. milk. You put the powder in there. If you keep it stirred up, everything's all fine. But if you don't uh, stir it up, all the little chocolate particles settle down, the heavier chocolate yeah. particles. That's what's kind of going on right now. Because the wind picked up a little bit, so it stirred up the atmosphere, which is why temperatures went up just a little bit. So we got a lot of clear skies out there right now. We're at 33 degrees, freezing at Randolph, 31 Port S.A., Stinson, 20s in the hill. Look at that, 23 in comfort. Of course, we've got bone dry air out there, very clear skies, and there is a just a hint of a breeze. Let me go back to this graphic right here, where the wind has picked up now to uh, six miles per hour out there at the airport. Maps aren't going to cooperate. There we go. Uh, seven at Castroville. So that's why we were at 31 just last hour. That little bit of breeze stirred things up a little bit to get the, the heaviest, coldest air is not down here at the surface. But of course, then on the flip side, we have a little bit of a wind chill to feel to deal with. It feels like 28 at the airport. 21 is the wind chill right now at uh, Hondo. So just brutally cold out there. But then a huge warm up throughout the day. We are going to be gaining anywhere from 35 close to 40 degrees. Mountain Cedar, very, very very high after those strong winds a couple of days ago. We do have another couple of fronts, another couple of very windy days in the forecast, so that's probably going to continue to shake up the mountain cedar trees. We'll drop down maybe another couple of degrees, fluctuate here and there. Again, depending on that little bit of a breeze out there this morning, however you slice it, it's cold out there. 60 at noon, and then don't even need a jacket by later on this afternoon. 68 degrees. Not as cold tomorrow, even warmer in the afternoon. We got the first front Friday, then the next front, and coldest air of the season, strongest front we've seen around here, and that's going to be coming through on Monday. All those details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, what's going on, sir? All right, Mike, yeah, definitely want to give yourself a little bit more time to warm up your car, kind of get out and about if, on this cold uh, Wednesday morning. Taking you outside, Trans Guide, look at that 410. You see traffic moving pretty good in that area there. 281 at the quarry, same situation. Uh, the biggest thing we're following at the moment is stalled vehicle there southbound at Cibolo Valley Drive. So this is going to be affecting our drivers coming into town from the far northeast side uh, right there at FM 3009 and Roy Richard Drive. Now I want to take you out to the far northwest side because we had a crash reported earlier on UTSA Boulevard that has been cleared out uh, for the moment. So we are clear on that end. But overnight, we did have a pretty big crash that shut down 1604 West at I-10. And we have video of this. It was reported as a deadly crash overnight. Happened just before 2 o'clock this morning. What we were told was that a driver of a pickup truck drove around an off-duty officer and uh, that officer was actually blocking traffic for construction. The driver ultimately crashed into a crane. So we've seen a lot of construction equipment out there. And unfortunately, that driver was pronounced dead at the scene by emergency officials. Um, obviously, um, this uh, crash is still under investigation and we'll give you more details uh, when we get those throughout the better part of the day. Want to take you real quick outside once again to our maps and you see the rest of the city things looking pretty good out there for the most part. So a lot of green on our screen, smooth sailing, but we'll continue to give you the very latest when it becomes available to us. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for two men who shot and killed an 18 year old man in his car last night. This happened just after 9 p.m. last night in the parking lot of an apartment complex in the 5600 block of Culebra Road on the city's west side. Police say the man and his girlfriend had just returned from shopping and were dropping off items when that shooting started. Police also say the girlfriend was hurt in the shooting. The suspects got away. So far, police have not released a detailed description of those suspects.
We are keeping an eye on a water main break from overnight that's causing low water pressure or no water service. In a tweet, the San Antonio Water System says it's happening in South Bear County, south of Loop 1604 East, on both sides of I-37 South. SAW says crews are working to restore service. Bear County Sheriff's Office has arrested a second suspect in a food truck scam operation. The man you see here is 39-year-old Omar Alexis Emmanuel Cruz. Now, Cruz faces charges of engaging in organized criminal activity and theft. The case involves dozens of people paying thousands for a custom-built food truck they never received. Now, Cruz is the second person who's been arrested in the case. However, the first suspect, Miguel Angel Cuellar Lopez, was re-arrested yesterday after bonding out of his first arrest. Meanwhile, investigators are still looking for Lopez's son, Miguel Angel Cuellar Martinez. If you know anything about him or where he could be, you are asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. That number is on your screen right now, 210-335-6000. Texas is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to reject a White House request to remove razor wire along the southern border. Customs and Border Protection agents stopped removing it last month on the order of a federal appeals court. But that was reversed after the Biden administration made an emergency request. Texas attorneys say the wire is state property and the removal undermines security efforts. In your morning headlines, chaos unfolding down in Ecuador, where police say criminals unleashed a wave of attacks, including storming a television station while they were live on the air. ABC's Rihanna Alley gives us an inside look as U.S. flights to Ecuador now face challenges and security concerns. This morning, major U.S. airlines are canceling some flights to Ecuador, including American, United, JetBlue, and Spirit, after the South American country declared an internal armed conflict. Yesterday, armed gunmen stormed a live television broadcast in the port city of Guayaquil. Gunshots ringing out as masked men brandish apparent explosives while flashing hand signals at the camera, holding the TV staff hostage for at least 15 minutes with the nation watching. Policia, policia. Police surrounded the studio, freeing the hostages and arresting 13 people involved in that attack. Three journalists from the station thanking police, adding, it's not possible living like this. We wish for things to get better. 28 other buildings were also attacked yesterday in Guayaquil, where authorities say eight people were killed and three more injured. The violence erupted across Ecuador on Monday when the president declared a nationwide state of emergency after a high-profile gang leader escaped from prison, along with dozens of prisoners connected to criminal organizations. Police have now set up checkpoints in Guayaquil and the capital, Quito. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Mexican-born Texas race actor Adon Canto has died at the age of 42. Now, Canto was best known for his role in The Clean Lady and Designated Survivor along with the TV series Narcos. His publicist says that Canto died on Monday of cancer. Canto is survived by his wife and his two young children. In other news, while we're preparing for a hard freeze here next week, right now a major storm system is still creating problems all across the country. Overnight wind and rain caused flooding in New York City. Over 400,000 homeowners are reporting outages across New York, New Jersey, and parts of Pennsylvania. Down in Georgia, two people were killed by falling trees. One person is dead after strong winds hit the state of North Carolina. Further south, at least four tornadoes pummeled Florida's panhandle. The power of those winds knocking this oceanfront house off of its foundation. You can see it tilted to the side, leaning onto the neighboring house. The severe weather canceled over 1,000 U.S. flights yesterday. Powerful winds in the Washington metro area forced Vice President Kamala Harris's plane, Air Force Two, to divert to Dulles International Airport instead of Joint Base Andrews over in Maryland. The massive system also brought blizzard conditions from Mexico to Iowa, closing schools and highways in multiple states. And finally, NASA's goal of returning to the moon has been delayed. NASA says the Artemis 3 mission will not take off until at least September of 2026. Instead of sometime in 2025, the reason for the delay is due to the development of the SpaceX Starship. The big rocket and spacecraft system had a pair of test flights last year that ended in explosions. The Artemis 2 mission was also moved from this November to September of next year.
609, uh, right around freezing here in San Antonio. Very cold. And still to come, menopause isn't something most of us want to think about, but it can happen early for no reason. What research says could trigger an early arrival. And up next, the local family is picking up the pieces after their food truck flipped over in an accident. Take a look at that. How they're trying to get things back on track with some help from our community. It's chilly out there. True January, around 33 degrees right now. Either way you look at it, you're going to need a coat, maybe even a sweater under if you're a colder person, kind of like me. We'll be right back.